I'm JJ Perez with Inside Runner Sports. That's Greg Luca, San Antonio Express News here at the Alamo Dome following UTSA's 54-24 win to close out the non-conference schedule. Greg, 52. 52-24. <laughs> That's not the first time I made that mistake today. But Greg, the Roadrunners start a little shaky, shaky in this one and kind of turn it on in the second half and, and run away with this thing. But it was not a pretty win for UTSA today, was it? Yeah, and this was kind of a weirdly important scenario because it felt like with the Conference USA season starting, and not just starting an important part of the calendar, but starting it on a Friday, yeah. a day earlier, they would have loved to be able to get everybody out of the game no later than halftime or even yeah. the second quarter if it worked out that way. And It did not. And, uh, you know, Jeff Trailer even admitted as much that they would have wanted to do that, and they didn't get to do that. The starters were all in there until midway through the fourth quarter because they just... They couldn't find a way to to put this team away. Yeah, they they couldn't shake them off. They wouldn't they wouldn't go quietly either. Give them a little credit, and, right? Yeah, I don't know what what's wrong with the I don't know what's wrong with the defense. Why they couldn't just get stops easier? Was there yeah. anything that jumped out to you? Just a lot of new guys in there are different guys, uh, different rotate. We didn't see Brandon Madison today. We didn't see Joe Evans. Yeah, it um, shouldn't matter. It it sh really shouldn't, but. I think it kind of did. I mean, it seemed like Texas Southern skill players were pretty competent, but this is a team that's just not that good, even at the FCS yeah. level, and so yeah. they shouldn't look that competent in this game, I don't think. But I don't I, I don't feel like I have a good grasp of why the defense struggled. I just know they gave up, you know, like 200 yards on the ground and 200 yards passing or something like that. And it's just not the kind of bottom line that you expect in a matchup like this. And I, were there some missed tackles, I guess? I don't know yeah. if that was the biggest issue yeah. or if they just, guys are just able to get open. Because I feel like the, you know, I think Corey Mayfield and Nick Fortune are good players. You know, you would think that they'd be able to, to lock these guys up, but they were still able to move the ball through the air some. And I don't, I just don't know. I don't feel, like I, have, weird I don't feel like I have a good answer for why why Texas Southern stuff seemed to work better than I thought it would. I'll have to, like, watch it back because I just well, I'm, I wasn't expecting it to be an issue. And, they just kept finding ways to break through or keep moving the chains and, and, and put UTSA on the back foot. I think Jeff Trailer said it best at the post game where he said something like he was a little bit all over the place with this, yeah. like the way this game was. And I think that's kind of a fair assessment, you know, just the way it seemed like UTSA was a little flat to begin well, this game. It, I think, you know, how many things did we see today that we haven't seen either this season or ever? So yeah. you get the first kickoff return in program history yeah. from uh, Chris Carpenter. Um, and then seven yards. you get UTSA's first interception of the year yeah. by Dewan Griffin in his first start. Yeah. And you get, I, I don't know if UTSA lost a fumble yet this season, and they lost two today. Yeah. Which was very strange. You know, the first one to Kavorian Barnes, if they were going to, you know, just come out and, and put this team away quickly, that stopped Might have that been right out of the game. Because yeah. that was their second, you know, they scored their first time down, then they had the fumble, and then I think they punted on the next two. The kickoff return might have been somewhere in there. But yeah. But in terms of just the offensive output, it, it wasn't there. and It wasn't great. I, and, you know, then you get other firsts, like DeCorian Clark, 217 yards yeah. is a new school record. And then yep. Frank Harris at the school passing record, I want to get that number right, he had 392 yards and four touchdowns. So, you know, we're used to those guys producing, but the amount of things that were unprecedented in this game was very weird. And it, it's it, you don't want to heap too much praise on those guys because it's just a product of the fact that they had to do that. Yeah. Normally, against this sort of a team, you might throw for 180 yards by halftime and with you're on the three bench. touchdowns, and then yeah. you're on the bench. But it wasn't; they weren't able to get it done that way. And a part of it, I guess, is that you said couldn't establish the running game. Yeah. Either. Yeah. So let's let's jump right right there. It, I, I don't know that Texas Southern and Coach Trailer said after game they kind of wanted to stop the run, but. I mean, there was a point early in the third quarter, it was like a 60-40 split, you know, pass versus run. And I mean, UTSA wants to be a running team, yeah. but I, I don't know that with all the injuries and the, the available personnel that they can be. I, the offensive line situation continues to be pretty alarming at times. I yeah. And I know Texas Southern finished with like two quarterback hits and no sacks, but it felt like Frank Harris was, was rushed under and pressure. under pressure quite yeah. a bit and yeah. had to make things happen. I even think Trailer said post game that he thought they maybe took a step back in the pass, yeah. in pass yeah. protection. It, it doesn't look like it was... I think they probably did a better job of keeping him clean than last week if yeah. you don't account for the opponent at right. all. But there's yeah. a big difference between what they had to do to do that against Texas and what they did to do that against Texas Southern. Because you would think those are scenarios where you don't need to leave a back in the chip or you don't yeah. need to have the tight end in there to help out. And it just felt like 
you know, man on man, that the offensive line is not holding up as well. And you know, it's it's still a product of the inexperience at tackle with a walk on Frankie Martinez at right tackle and, and Benley Tetafu, a converted guard in the first year here out of JUCO at left tackle, that they don't have the kind of guys who have the experience and or maybe even the talent in some cases to be able to hold up against tough matchups. But you would think today they would have been fine. And it felt like Frank still had to make things happen and luckily for UTSA their receivers are one of the high points of the team yeah and those guys were able to to get open enough to to make some plays and frank hit him when he had to there was a it's so funny because frank puts up all these crazy passing numbers and there's still a few throws a game where you feel like he misses it a little yeah bit. yeah today there might have been just one or two dip that were yeah, down the field two. yeah but yeah. but generally you feel like he could he could be having even crazier games if he cleaned up one or two of these tiny errors so they they had a fourth down that they did not convert in the second quarter and we both saw frank kind of try to rally the troops there on the sidelines. Yeah, you, and you called it out, which was good, because I ended up, you know, running with it for my story. But. Yeah, I mean, I, he even commented on it. He felt like he that's what he needed to do, maybe. Did he say something about the energy not being up or yeah, something? Yeah, I think to your question way earlier that I kind of just ignored it. It felt yeah. like they did come out a little bit yeah. flat, I think. And like, Kalechi and Wachuku mentioned the that, yeah. kind of emotional roller coaster of last week against yeah. Texas. and. Yeah. They're coming in as a 40 plus point favorite and maybe they were kind of thinking of this as a bye week or just yeah. didn't have the same you know intensity and focus yeah frank harris used the word focus a lot and to corey and clark said he felt like they really left a lot out there and, and jeff trailer said he was disappointed and that the locker room had a sense of disappointment as well so maybe they can come out this week against middle tennessee and it'll look totally different but if they play like this, that's pretty alarming and probably a cause for concern, especially when I saw Middle Tennessee beat Miami today. Yeah. On the road, they were 25-point underdogs, and they pulled that off. And meanwhile, you two say is a 40-point favorite, and this game turns into a real grind. To me, it looked like this was a team that had gone through a really tough three-game gauntlet and were, one, not right physically, but maybe a little beat down mentally because of how the, those three games have gone prior to this one. You, you think that's a fair assessment? Maybe it could be. I mean, I know certainly the just the sheer amount of guys you're missing matters. You know, we talk about the four offensive tackles incessantly because yeah. it's such a big deal. But then you add you add Madison and Joe Evans to the mix and now your defensive front's a little bit thinner. Dejan Taylor is obviously an yeah. important guy, not just with his play, but I think with what he brings to the leadership role and just yeah. kind of that spark that he brings to the defense. And Traylon Smith's probably their most talented running back. You know, maybe that could be part of the reason you can't yeah. get that ground game going as well. Although I would still lean more towards the offensive tackles. And so you, you mash that all together and there's probably still one or two I'm forgetting. I mean, yeah. it's not to mention that Rashad Wisdom went down in this game and yeah. I think they said he's still going to be evaluated, so we're not really sure the extent of that. It looks like he went in for a tackle on a guy who was making a catch over the Something middle. With the shoulder, man. And it, you know, it was very scary because the way he laid down on the field after. You think it's it, neck? It looks like a neck, but yeah. even seeing the play live and then on replay, he clearly hits with the shoulder. Yeah. So I don't know if you can get a really bad kind of stinger. I think or he some had kind a shoulder issue too or last, last year, at the end of last year. So. But whatever the case may be, he was watching from the sideline in street clothes, and then we had Frank Harris. It's so reminiscent of all the other times we've seen through the, his career where he's got a little bit of a hitch in his step. And yeah. He walks like an old man, so it's hard It's hard to say in all fairness. But, but it was this year, this game was the first time this year I've been yes. having those flashbacks. And he was just like... He went to the medical tent for the whole defensive yeah, drive. He said was, he got rolled up on his ankle, and then there was obviously an issue on the left cut, side. Some where, kind of cut or something. Yeah, but yeah, it seemed like he got probably a helmet hit him or something, yeah. and it, it busted him open a little bit. And then he had a big bandage there. So... You know, from a health perspective, they have to get regrouped quickly to be ready for Middle Tennessee. But I kind of imagine the 24-hour rule is going to be pretty easy in this case yeah. because, you know, at the end of the day, they did win by multiple touchdowns, yeah. and it was a least important game on the schedule. I think they'll be able to move past this one, and it'll be a non-factor going I, I know everybody wanted kind of a big blowout early, so that way you could get you know yeah. the, the younger guys in protect your guys and like you said UTSA had their key guys in well into the fourth quarter mm -hmm. because Texas Southern would not go away and even when even when Eddie Lee Marburger came in he's still throwing to the number one receivers yes. like they just left a lot of those guys out yeah. there I, at that point I'm doing a lot of writing to be ready for our instant online story yeah. on expressnews.com yeah. but 
I didn't see if they put uh, like Ben Rios and DeAndre Marshall in there. I, I didn't tackle, notice either. Because yeah. that was something that I thought was going to be really interesting to watch today. And then we were, you know, Jeff mentioned that, that Cam Cooper might be yeah. playing soon. Mm -hmm. And this would be a, a day for people who are yep. theoretically playing soon. Because we even saw like Cam Peters get in there at quarterback as well. So they should have had more time to be able to experiment with stuff like that and to see what those guys have. And instead, it was just. Here's the ones most of the way because they just couldn't get that lead stretched out. What's your take on the uh, penalty thing going on with UTSA? Obviously, the numbers are a little up this season and headed into this game that were well above their pace for last season. So up to this point, I was not interested in making it a, a big, big deal than it has yeah. to be because, first of all, in every game, they had the same or fewer penalty yards than the team they were playing against. Right. So a lot of times when these games get, you know, chippy or chippy. back and forth, or if they're... A few of them were chippy. Or if the officiating crew is just calling Sketchy. the game pretty tight yeah. Yeah. to the point where, you know, that both teams might be getting penalties they don't feel good about. You know, if you're less than the other side, I think that counts for something. And a lot of them, I think, especially last week against Texas, it came down to the amount of different things they were trying to do formationally. Yes, yes. And you can say, well, then they shouldn't do that much. Yeah. But like in a matchup where you're kind of overmatched, you sort of you have, have to. to. Yeah. So I felt like they did everything that they could to sort of limit that. Yeah. And there were just a couple of offsides or a couple of illegal yeah. shifts and a couple yeah. of whatever that we've seen through the first few weeks. But this game, you would think against an opponent like this, not only would it be a blowout, but you would think that they'd be able to play clean. Because Jeff's even said to us, you know, if you want us to come out and run our base stuff all the time, we can we can play a clean game. Yeah, and get you should have been able to come out and yeah. run all your base stuff and and, yeah. and 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 not get beat against yeah. a team like this. But instead, it was still, I don't know that they did a whole lot of exotic stuff. It didn't right. seem like they brought anything we hadn't seen, but they still weren't able to have a perfectly clean game. The interesting thing was that after the game, Jeff kind of broke down. You Each know, I penalty. Can't, I can't believe you know yes. Kevorian Barnes would get this late hit because he's yeah. the nicest kid on the freaking planet or yeah. whatever. And yeah. I can't believe uh, Gavin Sharp would be called for holding because right. he's as fundamentally sound as anybody we have. And, you know, Nick Booker Brown got a late hit and Jeff said there was no whistle. Yeah. And he called for unsportsmanlike conduct and Jeff said it was retaliation. Yeah. So if you want to just X them all off, I think the only one he didn't mention was there was a face mask. Right. Um, I don't remember if it was on a kick return or whatever. Yeah. Some special but, team something. But there yeah. was, so, you know, it's just a matter of the officiating crew and at least. At least they got it cleaned up in the second half. There's no debate about that yeah, part. Zero they, penalty, they five, five penalties in the first half, zero in the second half. And I didn't think the fishing was great overall today, but... And none of that pre-snap stuff, at least. Which right. Is a lot of what you really worry about with discipline. Yeah, so UTSA really needed, like, a zero penalty yeah. game. They didn't even get it, unfortunately, but... There was I, a holding on Benley that I believe was declined. Yeah. So, you know, there could have been one more, which would have made it look a little bit worse. That was in the first half as well, but... I just wanted to make sure, as long as we're running down all of them, we yeah. should mention that one as yeah. well. But generally, I still don't know that that's too much of a cause for concern, but we're gonna, it's certainly something I'm in my antennas back, up a Back of my more. mind yeah. a little bit, yeah. The uh, Roadrunners in non-conference play, two and two. I had them one and three in my preseason prediction. Um, considering how the, the first three games played out, do you feel any better or worse about this team? moving forward i will say i do have some questions regarding the health situation yeah of this how team could you not right because i mean it is i on the pregame radio show i described it as a dire situation almost because they just don't have enough depth and if another guy goes down you're gonna have serious serious issues and that's almost the heartbeat of that offense yeah and it could go the other way. I mean, they right. could get some people back, yes. which would make a in big a difference, weeks, too. In a few weeks, next week. So we'll see how quickly that's able to come to fruition and how much that impacts things. But generally, yeah, I think there is reason to be concerned about that. In terms of the just overall like state of the team, I think coming into the year, what they did through these first three games was prove that they are on an even footing with a lot of these teams or can at least play even with them for stretches yeah despite maybe not having i really don't think this team is as talented as last year's team when you look at the amount of guys who made an nfl roster off of that yeah. group and yeah. and think about who from this roster has that same chance it seems like last year's group was more talented and so it wouldn't have been a huge shock if this team took a step back despite all the experienced guys they have but do they have positions. more depth this but, year um it depends where you at yeah, where right i feel better about the secondary, maybe? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. I feel like last year's group was, was just 
probably stronger position by position, guy for guy, and a lot of different areas. The only hope is that the ones where it's the same, you know, like receiver and quarterback, that those guys take a step forward and that that would have been the difference maker this year. And I mean, they set some records today, so maybe that is the I mean, the we're four games in, so it, it certainly could be a high still... But the important part was just, to, sorry to think yeah. but just from like a program perspective, to, to not get blown out by Houston or yeah. Texas to, to say, you know, we're, we don't just have one good team. We have a team that is competitive with these major conference schools year after year was the statement they needed to make and they made it. And now, now's the part where the games count a little bit more, yeah. where if you want to hit your goal of a conference championship, that this is where you do it. Yeah, early on in this game, I had vibes of uh, Southern Miss last year where huh. it was kind of, you know, not the greatest game, but you just get out of here with the win. And I mean, to me, coming out two and two is, yeah, two and two is probably what you would expect. Yeah. I think, like statistically, the fact that this game should never be a loss, and you have a chance at least against Houston and a chance against Army, yeah, and a smaller chance, but it looked like they had a chance yeah. against Texas. Texas that yeah. you know, between those three, you can come out with two a decent chunk of the time, or come out with one. Sorry, because yeah. that's all you need to get to two and two. So yeah. I think two and two is a fair benchmark, and it's probably where you know I think most people would have thought they would end up. So. Everything's in front of them that they want. Yep, as Coach Trailer joked a few weeks ago, uh, district play is here, boys. And uh, man, I I am this Middle Tennessee. Every time UTSA played Middle Tennessee, it's been uncomfortable, uncomfortably close. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. We just did a we at the Express News did a little uh, video uh, for like a mid-season kind of football update mm -hmm. kind of thing, and I. We were talking about like looking ahead to the conference USA season, and I said this team's bad, this team's bad, this team is bad. And then you start looking at the scores, and a lot of these teams are more competitive than you think. Yeah. Rice you know, isn't terrible. I had a Middle Tennessee as kind of that middle tier, yeah, and they probably still are. But to beat Miami says a lot, yeah. And I, I had Rice as like a write-off, and then they beat Louisiana, and they looked pretty formidable. And and I don't know, UTEP maybe they're still on the weaker end, but they beat Boise State. And, yeah. and so that counts for something. I and think Western Kentucky hasn't looked bad either. No, Western Kentucky and UAB were the ones that I was like accounting for, that they're good. It's just that even the lesser ones are looking less free. Yeah. Like Florida International is like the only like free win that you have. And I thought there would be three or four of those. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how the league year plays out and what it means in the new format where there's not divisions. Right. You, you, it, I asked you today, can a two-loss two, two right. loss team make the championship in game? In some senses, you have a little bit more leeway. Yeah. In other senses, you don't. So it'll yeah. be interesting to see how that plays out because if, the, if all these teams really are competitive, you could see weird results week to week. Yeah. Right? It's like anybody could slip up at any given moment. Middle Tennessee in Murfreesboro Friday night. Western Kentucky here back at the Animal Dome two weeks from today. Those are big ones, right? Th those are huge. I mean, it, I mean, we've had we've had like at UAB circles all summer. Yeah, here we are, but now we're from Jump uh, Street. We gotta, you got to get there first. You, you got happens. you got a banged up offensive line, probably still twenty plus guys injured, and you just didn't play your very best game today to give you all that confidence in the world. So. It is uh, going to be a, a challenge, I think. I think we're in for a barn burner Friday night in Murfreesboro. So Yeah, they, they every time you think they're not going to play an interesting game, they go ahead and play an interesting game. So yeah. just assume it'll be one score in the fourth quarter, and we'll figure it drama, out. Drama, drama yeah. into Murph. Yeah, so we hit everything today, Greg? Yeah, Goldberg so for the most part. <laughs> Any Goldberg ac action? Uh, I, I Just me thinking that he gave a halftime speech for some reason. I asked about. Post game. I asked the Corey Clark, speech. you know, what was going on at halftime. And, yeah. You know, how did you guys try to get back into it or whatever the question was? And he mentioned Goldberg, and I was like, what? Like at halftime? And he was like, no. Okay. But that would have been a great story. Yeah. If Bill Goldberg, you know, sparks his team at halftime for a. Hilarious. For a we also saw the longest punt in UTSA history. Now, some of us I saw missed it. it. I missed yeah, it. Yeah, I missed I it as well. It happened, I guess. Definitely in the post game notes. Uh, oh, I should have had that for my list of firsts. Yeah. There was a lot of. See, yeah. Everything was out of the ordinary today. It's been an interesting season so far. It'll get a little bit more interesting, I think, this week. So, short week for UTSA, Greg. I think they're actually going to practice tomorrow. Tomorrow on Sunday. Yeah, because they're not going Monday. They're not so going we'll Monday. The, we'll get the rundown of how they're altering the schedule and what the approach is, especially from the health perspective. I mean, I know they took a little bit off this week. Yeah. And you might need to do it again. Yeah. So we'll especially see. with check in on Day Day. I think he was week to week. To week. What was encouraging was he didn't have a sling. No. Nope. And he Charles looked fine. Smith, yeah. Charles Smith didn't have the boot the on. Boot. And no. Jeff mentioned that some of the guys that they held out were precautionary. So hopefully that uh, holds up through the week and they can get those guys back out there because they need them. Yep. Well, that'll wrap it up. JJ Perez, Inside Runner Sports, Greg Lucas, San Antonio Express News. Appreciate you guys walking, watching. Talk to you guys next week.